Hello students, my name is Shanawaz Ahmed and I'm your tutor of uh, this paper ACCA TX. Uh, so first of all, uh, let me just tell you that uh, we are uh, preparing for this particular TX exam for the attempt June 2020 and September 2020. And we are we will be working on the financed act 19 that is going to be applicable from the june exams june 2020 exam till march 2021 recently there is a change of the finance act in the acca course and previously it was fa 18 and now we are studying fa 19 so this particular paper, the variant that is we are going to study is UK variant. So those who are planning for UK variant can join us for this FA19 course for either for June 2020 exam and for September exam. The course will cover the resources that we will going to share with our audience. So the course will cover the live sessions we have weekly live sessions the practice sessions and the curie sessions and we have all the recorded lectures of recorded lectures of each chapter that we are going to study in this particular paper similarly we will also provide you practice question of uh, each paper each chapter and we'll also cover the questions from revision kit comprising of all the past papers so those students will follow these live sessions and recorded sessions and practice questions and notes of each chapter you will get notes chapter by chapter so that you you have to you don't have to rely more on your study text once you follow the notes and the recorded lectures you you have to focus just on notes and lectures and don't bother about to read this entire study text and the entire revision kit now moving forward the syllabus that is uh, uh, this particular syllabus uh, let me tell you just uh, the topics of the syllabus that we'll cover in this syllabus so the first area that we are going to cover is the income tax section of the syllabus this is one of the most uh, important one and one of the most lengthy chapter as per the kaplan book this uh, comprises of uh, almost 10 to 11 chapters and huge examination examination weightage as per the marks the next chapter that we will cover is uh, inheritance tax although not a big portion as per the exam just uh, uh, a short one and then i am going to cover the value added tax again a very small portion and then a very important a very huge portion of the syllabus that is the corporation tax and finally we will cover the last topic that is chargeable gain tax so this this will be the sequence of our study first topic is income tax and the last topic that we will will cover is the chargeable gain so in between we have lots of practice sessions that is based on mcqs mtqs as well as the constructive response questions now as far as the uh, paper pattern is concerned, I am just uh, telling you the paper pattern as well as I will relate the above topics to the paper pattern. So, in this particular exam, we have three types of uh, section. Section A comprises of 30 marks and the entire section is based on OTQs, MCQs and there are 15 questions 
worth to each so we have 30 marks in section a now a question comes in the mind of a student that from which examination area the the examiner will ask question in section a so for your kind information this section a will be based on the entire syllabus an examiner usually ask those areas which are which a student seems to seems that these are unimportant will always be tested in section a such as the tax administration issues pertaining to individual as well as corporation is mostly asked in the section a similarly we have section b that is based on three ot case it is uh, based on the scenarios the short scenarios there will be three questions and each question worth 10 marks so in this way we have 10 marks of each question multiplied by 3 and we have total 30 marks from section b so you can see that the both section covers 60 marks of your entire paper and the success of this paper is largely dependent on how you perform in your section a specifically because the more marks you will get through otqs and mcqs the brighter is the chance that you will clear this paper in first attempt and let me just tell you this is one of the most one of the easiest paper of acca fundamental papers from f5 to f9 why it's easy why it's, student find it easy because uh, it is based entirely on the calculation the the mix of calculation and theory there are lots of calculation and less theoretical areas to be examined so most of the student likes to at attempt practice question if once they start doing practice question uh, if they practice a lot then this paper becomes very easy and the objective of our session is you will get a lot of chance to involve in practice session and the more we practice the more we'll cover the rules the the chances are that we'll clear this paper in first attempt now as far as the third section is concerned that is section c now section c is based on constructive response questions that is long questions and these long questions for these long questions you have you will be provided the excel sheet as well as the word processing document in excel you have to perform your calculation side and if you have to write some theoretical aspect you will be provided the word document now in crqs we have three questions comprises of 40 marks let me just give you the breakup of this question the question number one that will be based on that will be that will comprises of 10 marks and question number two that is of 15 marks and the third one will be worth 15 marks too now one good thing about this syllabus is that the question number two will be based on a topic that is income tax so in advance we know that one of the question of uh, will be based on income tax so you can get 15 marks of uh, this particular section by working well on your income tax area and the second 15 marks question is based on corporation tax again this is a fixed question and in each attempt there will be a separate income tax question and a separate corporation tax question later on i will tell you that uh, what are the topics that usually examiner ask under income tax and under corporation tax now what about this uh, uh, 10 marks question so it is not described that from where the examiner will create a question but generally the examiner ask three questions based on other topic areas one from value added tax comprising of minimum 10 marks one from 
IHT that is inheritance tax comprising of minimum 10 marks and the third is CGT again minimum 10 marks. So it means that either these three questions will be asked in section B. So it's mandatory normally examiner always ask a question on VAT, a question on IHT, a question on CGT, a question on income tax, a question on corporation tax. So this particular 10 marks question examiner might ask from the other syllabus areas. That means you have to be ready to encounter all the uh, issues in the entire syllabus because the examiner can ask anything from the syllabus either in section A, section B or section C. Now moving forward, you can see I have discussed the paper pattern, the syllabus areas. Now let's explore something in income tax area. Under income tax, we'll study the number one important topic that is employment income. That how an individual who is working as an employed person, we can compute employment income, then we will calculate tax on employment income. The next area that is that covers self-employment that is business income or trading income. You can also, also say that a sole proprietorship business. And it will also cover the another type of business that is the partnership business. And the third area is uh, property income. If an individual is earning something from property income that is to be taxed under income tax and there are some other areas that we have to consider such as pension income, NIC, national insurance contribution, we have tax losses, we have basis period and we have tax administration. So this is overall what we have to study in income tax section. Now let's let's start few things, few calculations from this particular section as I am going to start from the income tax portion. So but before moving to the income tax portion, let me show that the, you will get the uh, notes in the form of these PowerPoint slides in each for each chapter. You can see that this is a PowerPoint slides that will cover the entire chapter related with basic income tax computation. You can see that these all rules have been covered in this slide and my recorded lecture will also cover all these stuff. So what you have to do is to just uh, listen the recorded lecture and then go through these notes and practice question. Uh, you will find questions in this particular uh, notes as well as, so there are questions as well as. So the sequence is that listen lecture, follow the notes and you will easily get through this basic exam. Now let, let next, next stuff is moving forward. When we talk about uh, income tax of an individual, it is an obvious thing that income tax is applicable on an individual and in UK there are rules regarding tax residence that if an individual is a UK tax resident so he or she has to pay tax on worldwide income in UK. So this is the rule, this is a concept that if someone is classified as a UK resident person, then whatever is the source of income, wherever is the source of income, either you are earning from UK, either you are earning from US, whether you are earning from uh, say suppose uh, Pakistan, the entire income is taxable in UK. 
Why? Because you are tax resident. But if someone is classified as a non UK resident person, then what will be the consequence? Then if a person is a non UK resident and earning something in UK, then what will happen? Then he or she has to pay tax on UK income only. So in our lecture, we'll cover that how we can identify a person being a UK resident or a non UK resident. An important discussion that that usually examiner asks in the MCQs or sometimes as a part question in section C that what is the criteria? What is the judgment criteria of uh, a residence test? Now let's move forward. So we are going to apply tax on an individual's income. So we should know that the how that particular income is assessed. So as far as the assessment is concerned, an individual has to pay tax for a tax year. And in UK, the tax year starts from 6th April and it goes on till the 5th April, the following 5th April. So if I say that 6th April 19, if, if tax year starts from 6th April 19, then it goes to 5th April of the subsequent year that is 5th April 2020. And this particular tax year is called tax year 1920. That means what it means tax year starts in 19 and it will end in year 20. And an individual has to pay tax in this particular year. So if an individual is earning income in this particular tax year, an individual has to pay tax. Now, we have to identify on which source of income individual has to pay tax. So let me just clarify the source of income. Remember that the tax authority of the entire world is always looking for the tax money. They always looking, they always look for the persons who are earning money and they have the right to ask them that disclose your income and will charge income tax on your income. So we need to know that in UK, what are the sources of income on which an income tax is applicable? So we can classify an individual income into three parts. One is called the non-saving income. And the other one is called the saving income. And the third source of income is classified as dividend income. Every accounting student knows that what is dividend. So if a person has invested his money in, in stock exchange in shares of a company, then the type of income an individual is getting in the form of dividend is to be taxed separately as dividend income. And what about the saving income? Saving income pertains to the interest income. If you have invested money, if you have deposited money, if you have invested money in a fixed income security, so what you are getting is to be taxed at saving income. Not all, all saving income are taxable. There are some exempt income as well. Now, this uh, in our syllabus, this is a default category. What I mean default, it means that if the income is different from dividend income and saving income, then all such income will be classified as non-saving income. So let me just give you an example of non-saving income. In our syllabus, the non-saving income is number one, the employment income. Are you working somewhere? Yes. If you are working somewhere as an employee, what you are getting from there? Salary and other benefits. So we have to identify rules 
how to apply tax on salary and other benefits. What are other benefits such as car, fuel, bonus and other benefits that usually employer provide to all the employees. Now the next one that covers under non-saving income is uh, trading income. Trading income, trading income, the source of trading income are as a sole trader you are earning business income, you are, you are having a business or as a partnership business you are earning income as a partner. So trading income might come from a sole trader business or it might come from a partnership business. Later on we will discuss each in detail that how we can calculate employment income how we can calculate trading income and the third source of income is the property income which an individual earn through the rental business that is the rental of properties so in UK if someone is having a business of giving a property on rent that individual whatsoever, whatsoever is the income that income will be classified as property income so all these three categories are falls under the heading of non saving income sometimes there might be some other categories like pension income and so and so on so if other than the interest income and other than the dividend income all the sources of income you have to classify under the heading of non saving income now you will be provided a text sheet under which you will find certain rules regarding the income tax and other tax issues. So let me just share the income tax rate. Rather it's uh, better to be shared from my slide. So let's see from my slide the income tax rate you can see. You can see there are, uh, there are two types of uh, rate given here. You can see Let's see here. You can see that income tax rate. So we have three types of categories. One is the basic rate category, other is the higher rate category, and the third one is the additional rate category. These, these categories are designed in order to create a tax system which is usually called a progressive tax system. Now what is a progressive tax system? A progressive tax system is such that if a person has low income, the tax rate will be low. If a person has high income, the tax rate will be high. So as income increases, the tax rate also increases. So this type of system is called the progressive tax system. And in many countries, the income tax rates are usually designed according to this system. So that poor people have to pay low tax and the rich people have to pay high tax. So in our syllabus, the three types of band have been created. One is the basic rate band, other is called the higher rate band and the third one is called the additional rate band. So I can say this BR. HR and AR. So what is the limit? The limit is also being provided that the income up to 37,500 and this is an annual income because the band has been quoted as annual income. So if an individual has taxable income up to 37,500 in a tax year that particular individual is a basic rate taxpayer basic rate taxpayer. Similarly, if the individual's income increases from 37,500 but it's up till 150,000 that the person's band will be changed and now that person will be called an HR that is a higher rate taxpayer. But if someone's income exceeds this threshold then the person is somewhat a very rich person and that person is called uh, additional rate taxpayer. 
so it's very important to identify the category in which an individual falls why because the rates are designed in such a way that relates to the limit that relates to the band so we have two types of rates one is applicable on normal income and other is applicable on dividend now you might be surprised that i have discussed three source of income but the rates are related to normal as well as dividend so let me just clarify your confusion the normal means non saving income and it also means saving income so these two rules are applicable on both non saving income as well as the saving income so if a person has non saving or saving income and falls under basic category the rate is 20% but if income increases then the rate will be 40% on additional income this is a very important concept that you have to pay 40% on additional income not on total income and if the income increases above 150000 then on additional income you have to pay 45% and if an individual has dividend income in his pocket then the basic rate of dividend income is 7.5% the higher rate is 32.5% and the additional rate is 38.1% now let's discuss an important concept that is called the personal allowances in uk each individual will get a chance of an exempt income and that exempt income is called personal allowance now just clear the concept how this is an exempt income it is not a category of exempt income rather if an individual is earning up to 12500 pound in a given tax year that means the individual has to pay nothing in terms of taxation so up to 12500 the income is exempt for tax purpose it means that if an individual's taxable income is greater than 12500 then up to 12500 the income is not taxable so what we have to do deduct from your taxable from your income from your income deduct 12500 and then you will get a figure of taxable income now on this taxable income you have to see that the person is a basic rate tax payer as his income is under 37500 pound so this is the criteria that first we have to identify taxable income and then we have to see that in which band such a person falls so that we can apply the rates accordingly now moving forward as we have been provided with multiple rates we need to know a pro forma how to compute income tax so in order to compute income tax we need to know a pro forma through which we can see that what is total income what is net income and what is finally the taxable income so let me just create a pro forma for you so first of all the income tax pro forma so first of all in this pro forma there is a column called non saving income and it's usually the first column is a non saving income then the second column is saving income and the third column that we are going to apply our tax is dividend income and then finally a total income column now identify the source of income a particular individual is earning in a given tax year let me just assume that a person has some employment income so 
in which category you will transfer this employment income obviously that is non saving income and i have written 10000 into total as well now the person is also earning interest income which is taxable and there are assuming 5000 interest income so put this in the in the correct category that is saving income this individual is also earning dividend income so let me just classify it correctly so assuming 5000 and we have now three source of income non saving income saving income and dividend income now what we have to do is to just find out the total of each column and the total of the total column in this way we have 10000 of non saving income 5000 of saving income and dividend income and a total of 20000 income this particular income you have to write this is total income but the tax is not applicable on total income you can get certain reliefs in uk and if you deduct relief let me just assume that there are relief for example we have relief of 1000 further we will discuss in detail how we can get relief so we have relief so after deduction of relief after deduction of relief that is 19000 total income so the income is classified as net income so the first total is called the total income and the second total is called net income assuming there is no relief then total income is also known as net income now an individual will get his share of personal allowance and for a particular year the personal allowance is 12500 but in my example you can see that the personal allowance is uh, you can offset personal allowance first from non saving income and then the remaining personal allowance you can offset from the second column in our exam we will always offset personal allowance first from non saving income then from saving income and then from dividend income remember to use the sequence of adjusting personal allowance now after writing it off my non saving income becomes zero my saving incomes becomes 1500 and the dividend income is 5000 and now this is the final total that is 6500 and we have taxable income this is the final income on which you have to apply tax and you can read it as we have non saving taxable income zero we have saving income taxable saving income 1500 we have taxable dividend income 5000 and we have total taxable income 6500 now after looking towards this you can identify the person is called a basic rate tax payer why because its taxable income total is under 37500 now accordingly you have to see the rules of uh, tax that the income falls in the basic rate band so either 20% is tax rate or 7.5% is the tax rate one important thing that is you must uh, know you should learn from this is that the personal allowance that is 12500 for a particular tax year is available for each individual this is available for husband separately for wife separately for civil partner even it's available for children but surprisingly if you want to get this 12500 to be deducted from your net income your income limit must be up to 100000 pound what it means it means that if an 
individual's income is up to 100,000 pound. So full personal allowance is available to be deducted from net income. That is 12,500. If income is up to 100,000. But what if, if income exceed 100,000? If income exceed 100,000, then your personal allowance is start, starts reducing and you have to reduce your personal allowance. And sometimes it's possible that you have a personal allowance of less than 12,500 and sometimes it is also possible that your personal allowance becomes zero. That means you will not get the benefit of a tax-free income that is exempt income or the tax-free income because your income is too high to be eligible for a tax-free income. But if income limit is up to 100,000, it's less than 100,000, then an individual is always eligible to get the full personal allowance. You can, you can uh, watch the recorded lectures of personal allowance computation. Then in what case you will get 12,500, in what case you will get the less than this, and in what case you will get a zero personal allowance. This is not today's agenda to discuss the detail of personal allowance. Now, I hope you people have some queries in your mind that I am going to take at the end of the session. And I asked uh, on the group that uh, please uh, post your questions. If you have any question, then just post. And I will answer your question at the end. So those who have just joined, you can join this session through the link provided in the uh, on, on my WhatsApp group and uh, be part of this lecture. So hopefully things are uh, pretty clear to you. Nowadays we are facing a, a very a very disastrous virus that is called the coronavirus all over the world and in Pakistan too people are suffering from this virus. Hopefully it will be uh, uh, it will be eliminated soon so that we have a sigh of relief and will be will uh, everyone should be should be safe. Will we, I wish that everyone should be safe. Uh, wherever every, uh, the person is leaving. So let's just move further and discuss some basic text computation stuff in today's class. And let's have a working of uh, uh, some computation. So let me just assume that uh, an individual is uh, having employment income of 27,500, no other source of income. And we have to calculate income tax liability. There is just one source of income. Now, as it's, a, it's just single source of income, so it's very easy to compute. So first of all, as per the performer, I have one source of income that is employ employment income. So I've just write it down, employment income 27,500. And then I have to deduct the relief, assuming there is no relief. So 27,500. This is net income. In exam, you can directly calculate, but I'm just telling you in order to clear the concept. After that, we will deduct personal allowance. Will this person get a personal allowance? Yes. Why? Because its income is below 100,000 mark. So how much personal allowance is available? That is full 12,500 is available. So let me just work out 12,500 and we have taxable income of 15,000. You can see that this is taxable income. And in which, in which category you will classify this taxable income? This is a category of a 
non-saving income. And we, we should know that the rates applicable to the basic and this also the person is classified as a basic rate taxpayer. So as far as the basic rate of uh, non-saving income is concerned, you can see the rates. The basic rate taxpayer on non-saving income has to pay 20% tax. So it's very easy to calculate 20%. Because we have taxable income of 15,000. So we have uh, non saving income and that is 15,000. So 15,000 multiply by the basic rate that is 20%. How much tax you have to pay? You have to pay your tax liability for the given tax year is 3,000 pound. just a beginning it's just the start and let me just remind you this paper is all about calculation all about the tax rule your memory the test of your memory the more you practice the more you remember the rules the ease with which you can pass this paper and and we have the passing rate above the global rate sometime it's 70 percent sometime it's 75 percent and so and so on and sometimes you also touch 100% marks as well so what you have to do i'm also guiding you that what you have to do just to take the just to listen the recorded lectures just to go through your notes practice 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 remember the p three p's and what is the three p's that is uh, practice practice and practice one important thing you can easily remember the rules is to just create some mind maps or to summary notes if you create some summary notes of each chapter they can easily recognize the rules and recall the rules uh, and in your exam now let's moving forward let's just take another example and uh, now let me just put some higher figures for example we have uh, trading income of 52500 calculate income tax liability now we'll move according to our performa so we have uh, trading income 52500 and now what i have to deduct i have to deduct relief again there is no relief for the time being so we have net income of 52500 now from this net income the individual will get a personal allowance of 12,500. So from 52,500, deduct 12,500. I hope my calculation is correct. The taxable profit is 40,000. Now I have to apply tax on this, but the problem is that I have to check that whether this person is a basic rate taxpayer or a higher rate taxpayer. So this person is now a higher rate taxpayer and the income is greater than 37,500. So that means some additional rates, some uh, the rates will be uh, different. So if you have to calculate income tax on this, income tax computation, if I have to perform, then on this particular non-saving income now there is a concept called up to 37,500 till the basic rate the rate of tax is 20 percent so now let's uh, have some calculation so 37,500 into 0.2 that is 7,500 pound but the income is 40,000 so the remaining income falls in 
how much remaining income just calculate the remaining income so the remaining income that covers in this is 40000 minus 37500 so we have 2500 multiply by the rate that is 40% so we have in this way you can see that on the additional income the income tax is 1000 so the total income tax comes to be 8500 and this is the person's income tax liability so you can see that as income increases so you can see that uh, what i am doing how i am applying the rates very important to understand that the rates how rates are to be applicable and again it's just a beginning right now we're just playing with the one source of income we are just playing with little numbers but as we goes along the things becomes complicated the rules becomes uh, the rules becomes very wider and you have to keep in mind all the rules but as you go along with the basic examples your income tax computation your other areas will be very much intact for the exam now in the first example i have created a basic rate taxpayer example now I've created a higher rate tax example now let's create a person having an additional income or additional rate taxpayer but before moving into this let me just give you a rule of personal allowance that if if an individual who is a taxpayer and having an income that is greater than 100,000 as we already discussed that if an individual earning income that is greater than 100,000 what would happen to his personal allowance its personal allowance will start to decreasing his personal allowance will be reduced and if its income is 125000 125000 or more then the personal allowance becomes zero so if the income is 125000 or more than that what you have to do just write a sentence that the individual is having more income so the personal allowance is zero again you should know that when i say income what is that income so we have to identify income as this income is called adjusted net income and that is called a n i and you have to learn the formula of how to calculate a n i let me just give you the formula in order to calculate the adjusted net income first you have to identify net income then you have to deduct gross personal pension contribution if there is any in the question then you have to deduct the gross gift add donation if it is given in the question then the figure will be called the a n i and you have to check that a n i and there are three situations a n i is up to 100000 your a n i is greater than or equal to 125000 or is in between is uh, greater than 100000 and up to less than equal to less than 125000 or you can say that it is in between 100000 and 125000 so as per uh, the understanding it says that sometimes you will get 12500 sometimes you will get zero and sometimes you will get a reduced amount so on the basis of this concept let me just uh, create another example 
again let me put a simple example a person's trading income and the person's trading income is way ahead of the second band that is 1 lakh 80 thousand calculate income tax liability right now i am playing with just only one source of income but as i i'll go on i will connect saving income as well as dividend income into a single example so in this case you can see that the person is having a non saving income that is trading income of 1 lakh 80000 there is no relief again just no relief so we have net income of 180000 there is now the question mark is that will an individual get any personal allowance so answer is no why because income is greater than 1 lakh 25000 so just write here zero and in this way the taxable income becomes 1 lakh 80000 who is that person is basic rate taxpayer higher rate taxpayer or additional rate taxpayer so you can see this person is clearly a additional rate taxpayer now see how i apply tax rate on this 1 lakh 80 thousand of income so we have non saving income up to the basic rate band that is 37,500 multiply by the basic rate that is 20 percent so we have an income threshold of 7,500 now the next band figure is a portion of non-saving income falls in the second band and that is how we can identify the difference between 37,500 and 150,000 and this comes to be 112500 and the rate will be double so the tax liability of this particular income is too much 45000 but we have the total income is 180000 so the additional income 30000 falls in the additional rate band so we'll cover this 30000 as 45 percent tax on this 30000 again a huge one and that is called that is 13500 so in this way the income tax liability comes to be 66000 pound so you can see that as you earn more you have to pay more tax and this is a fair system that an individual who is a rich person he or she has to pay more tax as compared to those who are not earning much income now the overall discussion that uh, we have done today in this particular se session is about uh, what is our paper what is the paper pattern how we are how we'll uh, complete that paper the sequence of that paper and i have just shown that how we can calculate income tax or other tax computation in an easy way and that is simple if you know the rules if the rules are in front of you if you know the rules if you know that that how you can apply tax if you know the rules then it will be very easy to just move along for example let's follow the slide what it says the personal allowance the personal allowance for the tax year 1920 is 12500 don't need to memorize this it will be given in the tax sheet but this is gradually reduced to nil where a person's adjusted net income exceed 100000 
and what is adjusted net income i have already told you is net income minus gross amount of personal pension contribution and gross gift at donation so what i said if you listen the lecture if you go through the notes then you can easily apply the rates easily calculate what is the requirement so i am going to uh, stop my lecture here if you have any question any confusion anything you want to ask anything feel free to discuss just post a message in the chat box or on my whatsapp group whatever is convenient to you i am just waiting to answer we have just 5 minutes more so i am just waiting to answer your question if you, if there is no question then i will discontinue this meeting and the recording if you want the recording of today's meeting then i will share on this whatsapp group so this will be available tomorrow and the notes so the slide the first slide that is in front of you i'll be sharing with the, with you and this and you can also watch my youtube channel there are lots of tax stuff f uh, accounting stuff the reporting stuff the f7 the f9 the sbr you can find lots of stuff so feel free to ask the question anything you want to ask so i think nobody is bother to ask any question so let me just write in the chat box i recommend to follow the kaplan study tax if you want to study book you are book lover and then kaplan revision kit which cover all the previous past papers and so and so on so guys uh, uh, have a nice time i am having a good uh, day with you a good session hopefully you will understand many things regarding taxation paper still a uh, lots of confusion remains uh, so if you want to ask later on you can just post a message pm me on my personal message on whatsapp and any uh, other way you can find it out you can ask any question so i am just uh, signing it out uh, that's good uh, thanks a lot for having a positive word one student has posted a comment on whatsapp that the session was good and uh, that's very encouraging that is the um, price of this session i got my price so uh, thank you so much for watching this lecture uh, i hope we'll meet soon and we'll have an interaction via whatsapp via youtube and other medium thank you have a nice day